The word plague conjures up images of death, decay, despair, and societal collapse, as an invisible and insidious killer indiscriminately spreads through a population, killing friend and foe alike. However, in 1518, the city of Strasbourg in modern-day France was hit by a strange epidemic that did not infect the body, but the mind. For three months, what became known as the Dancing Plague tore through the community, ensnaring onlookers in its grasp as it robbed victims of their very free will, compelling them to dance uncontrollably for days at a time. Yet although outbreaks of spontaneous dancing might seem harmless and even comedic, dozens of the afflicted are thought to have perished from sheer exhaustion, the mind unable to reassert control over the flesh, resulting in the disturbing situation whereby people literally dance themselves to death. To this day, this bizarre historical mystery still raises a simple but unsettling question. Can insanity be infectious? Life in 16th century Europe was hard. Poverty, war, and disease ran rampant, and with the Age of Enlightenment still centuries away, people sought comfort from the harsh reality they inhabited by embracing unusual forms of superstition. It was against this chaotic backdrop that a strange phenomenon emerged in the town of Strasbourg in the Holy Roman Empire in the summer of 1518. The unusual story began when an otherwise unassuming woman started dancing in the street despite there being no accompanying music to guide her rhythm. While such a public display was initially greeted with little more than curious amusement or disapproving mockery from the local community, as the hours passed, onlookers became increasingly concerned, unsettled, and even fearful. Alarmingly, the woman appeared to no longer be in control of her own body, seemingly compelled to continue her manic dancing until she eventually collapsed from sheer exhaustion. However, the tale did not end there. Upon waking from a measly few hours of rest, she began to once again dance uncontrollably, her movements frantic and driven by a hypnotic madness, her face contorted in panic and pain as her arms flailed and her body gyrated to the sound of little more than the summer breeze as the ever-growing crowd of horrified onlookers helplessly watched on. With her feet now blistered and bloodied, the tormented woman's physical ordeal continued day after day. However, whatever madness had taken hold of her appeared to be both unstoppable and contagious. Within weeks, dozens of others had joined the woman in her crazed and unending dance, their frantic movements somehow infecting the minds of others as more and more people found themselves unwilling participants in the increasingly frenzied dance. As arms and legs flailed and swung under the summer sun with mindless intensity, fatigue began to take its toll, and the woman who started it all is said to have died from exhaustion, along with several others, the victims compelled by an unknown force to dance themselves to death. Within a month, a crowd of as many as 400 men, women, and children danced and cavorted their way through the streets of Strasbourg, moving relentlessly without music or song as the bizarre plague of the mind continued to gain momentum. Many of the afflicted could be heard crying out in pain and pleading for mercy, however no respite would be granted, leading those who remained untouched by the insanity to conclude that the dancing plague was the work of the devil, a curse unleashed upon the sinners amongst them, the resulting suffering thus a just and proper punishment for their spiritual crimes. With the epidemic spiralling out of control, city authorities finally decided to intervene. Medical experts were convinced that the illness was caused by hot blood and decided that the best way to halt the spreading madness was to mandate more dancing in the belief that the participants would burn the fever out of their blood and thus be cured. A special stage was constructed in the city centre to give the dancers more room to move freely, while professional dancers and musicians were hired to provide assistance and encouragement for the dancing crowd. However, the results of this well-intentioned interference proved to be disastrous. Rather than snuffing out the dancing plague, the misplaced actions of authorities simply spread it even further. Placing the dancers in a highly visible location, while heightening the spectacle with the addition of musicians and professional dancers, greatly amplified the infectious power of the plague, as its invisible tentacles grasped the minds of hundreds more from the watching crowd the contagion seeming to be able to jump to new hosts through sight alone. 
deaths from exhaustion, heart attacks and even strokes began to rise as more and more citizens fell victim to the strange and irresistible compulsion to dance without end. Panicked by this dramatic escalation, authorities reversed course, deciding that it was divine wrath instead of hot blood that was causing the crisis. Clearly, the afflicted were being punished for their earlier sins, and so penance was enforced as all music and dancing was temporarily banned. Those still suffering from the dancing plague were dragged to the remote shrine of St. Vitus, well away from prying eyes, where they were led around a wooden statue of the long-dead saint, who some believed had the power to curse those who displeased him by taking over their minds and forcing them to dance. This enforced exile of the sick seems to have had the desired effect, and in the following weeks the epidemic rapidly declined, before finally ending as quickly and mysteriously as it had begun. Although the exact numbers of deaths remains disputed, hundreds may have perished as a direct result of the dancing plague, however even today a definitive explanation as to what could have driven so many people to abandon reason and dance themselves to death remains elusive. While scholars of the past blamed the phenomenon on demonic possession, overheated blood, or divine punishment, modern investigators have sought more scientific explanations for the bizarre outbreak. A popular theory is that the dancing plague could have been caused by victims ingesting ergot, a type of mould that grows upon the stalks of rye which can cause hallucinations, muscle spasms, paranoia, and a variety of other afflictions of the mind when bread made with contaminated flour is consumed. Although compelling, this theory seems implausible, since the hallucinogenic effect of ergot poisoning typically wears off after less than a day, whereas victims of the dancing plague were affected for several weeks at a time. Ergot poisoning also affects different people in different ways, making it highly unlikely that hundreds of people would manifest identical psychological symptoms at the same time. The poisoned also tend to suffer from constricted blood supply to the arms and legs, which would often cause gangrene, making any kind of physical exertion extremely difficult. A far more probable explanation is that the dancing plague was a form of mass hysteria, a well-documented phenomenon whereby large numbers of people exhibit the same bizarre and irrational behaviour in unison. Capable of spreading in the same manner as any biological pathogen, this sickness of the mind has occurred many times throughout history, with other cases of mass dancing outbreaks occurring across Europe as far back as the 13th century, and even the infamous Salem witch trials in the late 1600s are thought to have been caused by a similar form of group mania. Such outbreaks of mass panic, hysteria and delusion usually occur in populations that are under extreme psychological distress, and manifest in the form of culturally relevant fears, two prerequisites which were both present in the 1518 Dancing Plague outbreak. The citizens of 16th century Strasbourg were experiencing just the kind of stress that is the perfect breeding ground for mass hysteria to spread. Religious conflicts, rampant disease, poverty and food shortages were widespread. The miserable, desperate and hopeless people of the city rendered highly suggestible to pre-existing superstitions and beliefs. Against such a backdrop of suffering and stress, it's easy to see why many people believed that God was angry with them, a divine wrath that could easily be explained by what was known as the Curse of St. Vitus. Inhabitants of the Rhine Valley believed that St. Vitus possessed the power to seize control of an individual's mind and compel them to dance should they displease him, a divine punishment which bears a striking resemblance to the Dancing Plague outbreak of 1518. This pre-existing fear of a dancing curse could thus have manifested itself in those who were psychologically vulnerable, the afflicted unconsciously acting in the way they believed someone cursed by St. Vitus should behave. The flawed response of the authorities also explains why the dancing plague spread so far so quickly. By placing the affected in the most public and visible area of the city, the contagious power of the illness was supercharged, guaranteeing that anyone else in the city who was susceptible to such theological fears would witness the spectacle and also become infected as they considered their own sinful ways. As superstition and religious conviction gradually gave way to the new gods of reason and science, such outbreaks of mass hysteria became far less common. 
However, the dancing plague of 1518 serves as an eternal yet disturbing reminder of just how fragile the human mind can become when placed under extreme stress and discomfort. Thanks for watching the video, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I hope to see you again soon.